School starts up in two weeks, and that made me think of plaid. <laughs> September makes me think of school. School makes me think of uniforms, and uniforms make me think of plaid. I don't know why, maybe because I spent my entire pre-college life in Catholic school, and there was always some kind of element of plaid within the uniform. Anyway. I have already talked about how to create a plaid in Photoshop in this video, but today I want to talk about how to do it in Illustrator. Now I will tell you there are lots of videos on YouTube that do this in very interesting and creative ways, but my goal is always to find the most efficient method. So what I'm about to show you is what I think is the easiest and most efficient method to create a plaid in Illustrator. Start with a square and you do want it to be a square. The size doesn't really matter. So unless you have specific measurements, you can either hold the shift key as you drag the rectangle tool to make your shape or look for the diagonal pink line on your square, which is the smart guide and indicates you have drawn a perfect square. The shape should be filled with your ground color and have no stroke. Then add the vertical stripes. You can choose to change the color as you draw the stripes or draw the stripes and then go back and adjust the color afterwards. I do think it's a little more efficient to update the color after you draw the stripes, but it's totally up to you. Also, as you're drawing the stripes, don't worry about them going past the edges of the square. We'll take care of that next. If you have any stripes that need to be centered or re-spaced, select those stripes and use the align panel to center them or distribute the spacing. Next, we'll get rid of the parts of the stripes that overhang the ground color square. Select all of the objects and in the Pathfinder panel, choose Divide. Ungroup. Then delete any parts of the stripes that are outside of the original square. Next, create a copy of the layer. Hide the original layer and rotate the stripes of the new layer 90 degrees to create the horizontal stripes. And note that you don't have to use the exact same layout if you don't want to. If you want to use a different layout, repeat the same steps that we did for the vertical stripes and just make sure the ground color square is aligned with the one on the first layer and it's the same color. Next, we're going to create the twill weave. You want a thin rectangle and it needs to be twice as long as the original box. Honestly, I just eyeball it. Make the fill any color that you have not used in your plaid. Rotate the box 45 degrees and then align the center of the box with the upper left corner of the square. I usually zoom in and drag the center mark of the box until I see the pink intersect smart guide. Do the same by dragging a copy of the box to the lower right corner. Next, Use the blend tool to blend the two diagonal rectangles and then double click the blend tool icon, change the spacing in the blend options box to specified steps and using your up arrow key on your keyboard, increase the number of boxes as desired. Remember, this is going to be the twill weave texture so the number of specified steps should be pretty high and you need to have an odd number of steps. This is pretty important or the pattern doesn't line up correctly. Once you hit OK, expand the twill lines and then once again, use the divide pathfinder to remove the parts of the twill texture that overhang the ground color square. Then to create the twill texture on the pattern, Use Select Same Fill Color to select all the yellow lines, 
and press delete. Now show the original layer, select the entire pattern and drag it to your swatches panel. And now you're ready to add it to your sketch. Now, I used a couple of techniques that I did not explain as much, but I do have videos for them on my channel. So if you are not familiar with Select Same or you're not familiar with how to use the Blend tool, you can watch these two videos. Thanks for watching today's video. Make sure you check out the links in the description for more information about my digital design classes and to grab one of my freebies, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.